What's up everyone, Clark Glassford, founder of My Practice Senior, where we help you land your dream job. And today I'm answering the question that gets asked all the time, which is, do I apply for the job if I don't meet all the qualifications? And my answer to that is almost always yes. Now, I'm gonna give you insight as to why you should be applying for those jobs, even if you don't have all the qualifications. But before we get there, please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Each week I am posting new videos with excellent insight to help guide you through the recruitment process, the interview process, to sail your way through so you hear those magic words, you're hired. So subscribe, check out my channel, check out all the videos I've posted before. There is some great resources there for you. Now with that said, here we go. So we're talking about applying for jobs when you might not have all the qualifications. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the back end. What happens on the employer side? So employers, they create these job postings and some employers create really engaging job postings, but a lot of them, they just put a whole lot of information down and it's kind of like a wish list of things they want the, the applicants to have. And it's a laundry list of stuff for employers. They put this stuff down and it kind of, it can turn off applicants. It can turn off people wanting to apply because they feel they don't meet the qualifications. And some of the language they use makes absolutely no sense. For example, I went on Indeed and I pulled off just a couple key highlights of jobs that were posted asking for specific skills. Check this out. One, ability to consume and synthesize intelligence about actors, techniques, or situations to identify emerging risk scenarios. Any clue what that means or how you'd write that on uh, your resume? I don't know. Next one, advanced interpersonal and communication skills. That came off a four page job posting. Who knows how you demonstrate advanced communication skills and interpersonal skills. I think I need a PhD in human studies for that. And the last one here, it's a long one, bear with me. Proven ability to build relationships and influence individuals at all levels in a matrix environment, blah, 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 blah. So the point I'm trying to make is employers put together these job descriptions. The smart employers take those job descriptions and market the job into engaging job postings. A lot of employers just take the job description and they post it. So it becomes a wish list of things that they want applicants to have. I almost think of it like they're looking for a unicorn which they're never going to get. From my experience as a recruiter, working in all sorts of different organizations, some who do great job postings, others who not so much, 90% of my best hires have been people who do not have all the qualifications. For example, early in my career, when I was applying for jobs, there typically I was trying to make the jump to the next level and if they wanted five years experience, I only had three. That would be enough to put some people to say, look, I don't have the five years, I can't apply for that job. I applied, I articulated how I met the qualifications and I was hired in those roles. And so many clients of mine that I work with have the same impact when they apply. So I want you to start applying and I've got four key tips here that will help guide you through the application process and making sure that you're articulating exactly why and how you have the qualifications for the job so you get the call for the interview. So here we go. The 90% rule. Make the case that you meet 90% of the job requirements. So a lot of what you see on job postings is a whole bunch of stuff, different skills and abilities, but a lot of it comes down to experience where job employers are asking for a certain period of time of experience. So if they're asking for five years and you only have three, but you've got all the ex actual, actual experience they're asking for, make sure you articulate that on your resume. Even if you don't have the full five years and you've just got that three, put it down and chances are they will be calling you for an interview. It's the 90% rule. If you can look at a job posting and say, I actually meet about 90% of the requirements here, that's your tick to say, I'm gonna apply, I'm suited for this role. So the 90% rule is absolute key. Do that on the front end when you're applying for jobs. Tip number two, close the gap. What I mean by this is sometimes you might not have all, all, that ex, all the experience 
outside of just the, 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 the time experience, so that three to five years we were talking about before. And you might be missing some key things. So now the next piece is when you're putting together your resume and cover letter, you want to demonstrate these three points, enthusiasm, motivation, and fit for the employer. Employers want to hear that you're enthusiastic, you're motivated, and you're gonna be a fit on their team. That all gets put into your cover letter, you sprinkle that throughout your resume, and that helps sell you for the role. If you're having trouble on the cover letter resume side, I'm linking a couple things. You'll see a link up here and a link down below in the description part. Have a look at those videos that I posted for you. If you're really struggling with that, reach out to me. We do great resume work at the My Practice Interview company here. So reach out to me and I can help you on that front. Tip number three, networking. Now for some of you, you're like, I've got great networks. I know all about networking. Some of you are like, I hate networking because it feels like I'm having to put myself out there. When it comes to applying for jobs where you may not have all the experience, it's really good to use your network. Try and find through a friend, a contact, and in with the organization, 80% of jobs are filled through networking. I hate to say it, but it's true. That only is 20% for those of you who are applying just fresh off the street to get jobs. So 80% are, are filled through networking. So you've got to use your networks to apply and get information and get that inside edge to get hired or at least get a call for an interview. Now, LinkedIn is a wonderful place. If you say, I, Clark, I have no networks. I don't know anybody. I've been living under a rock and I can't get anywhere to get into this organization. Use LinkedIn. You can search for specific companies. You'll see people who work within those companies. You reach out to those individuals and connect with them. And I know some of you are squirming a little bit now as I say that, it really, really works. Once you connect with them, a quick note, all you have to do is say, hey, thanks for the connection. I'm really interested in this job that I've seen with, with your employer. Would you have five minutes to spare to just talk to me about, about the position? Or can you refer me to someone who can talk to me about the position? What is the worst they're going to say? Well, the worst they're gonna say is nothing. They won't respond. The best they're gonna say is they'll reach out to you or they'll connect you with somebody else who can give you some information about that job. And I'll let you in on a little secret here. As a recruiter, any time someone reached out to me specifically and said, I'd like to talk to you about this position, I would respond. Whether it's email or a phone call or a text message, I would respond to that individual. Because I'll tell you this, not that many people actually take that step to network. It is so few people who actually do it that it's so powerful when someone contacts me and has taken the time to find me, contact me, want to, want to discuss the role, I will take five minutes, that's all that's out of my schedule, to talk to them about the role. And now they're in my, now they're in my brain, now I'm getting their resume, now I'm looking at it. They may be qualified, they may not, but now at least as a recruiter, I've seen it. And that's what you need to do. You need to get it in the hands of a recruiter. Networking works and it's super powerful. Don't miss this opportunity. The last tip here, tip number four, you've got nothing to lose. Nothing to lose at the end of the day. So what is the worst that's going to happen by you applying for jobs that you may not be fully qualified for? Nothing you won't get a call back for an interview. Well, that then gives you some indication that either A, they had other people in mind, or B, you, you weren't meeting the qualifications they were looking for. That may mean you have to refine your, your job search a little bit. It may mean you need to refine your resume and cover letter a little bit, but at least you tried. You are not going to get calls for interviews if you do not take the opportunity to apply for those jobs, even if you think you don't meet all the qualifications. So take the chance, get your resume and cover letter ready, draft it for that role and get it out there. And before you know it, mark my words, you will be getting calls for interviews. So four tips, follow all four. They work beautifully. They've worked with countless clients of mine who have landed roles that they were not fully qualified for, including myself who has used these exact tips. So hope you enjoy the video. As always, in the links below are a couple great resources. My practice interview ebook, it's a free ebook, has actual sample practice interviews at the end of the book where you can practice for your interview. Get it, it's free. You've got no excuse not to download that right now. The next link there you'll see is my interview accelerator workshop. It's a step-by-step -step workshop 
on how to prepare for your job interview. Starting with crafting resumes, cover letters, the different types of interview questions, how you answer those questions, how to avoid all the landmines and pitfalls from every interview I've ever seen and the stuff that applicants kind of step in. I'm going to teach you how to avoid all of that. So at the end of the day, you're hearing those magic words, you are hired. So that's it for this week. Like I always say, happy interviewing everyone.